All right. So how's everybody doing? We hope uh, you guys are all doing fine. Uh, stay safe, stay in your houses. And, uh, and yeah, if you guys don't have to go out, please don't go out. You know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not as important as your health. Uh, so that said, all right, we're ready to go. All right, so last class, when you guys were in the actual session, uh, I was still using some of my brushes, which are nice and fancy brushes, and I actually have more of these. But it's unfair because these are, you know, just between these three brushes, we're probably talking about close to $100, and that's really unfair because that's not what you probably will find at this moment. And if you guys are just doing watercolor for the first time, that's probably not what you have. So I'm gonna go and put that on the side. And I actually uh, order just really basic brushes, okay? So these are all watercolor brushes. These are all student grade uh, brushes, but they work really well, okay? So these are two uh, bright brushes that we have here, and these are two round brushes. These all together, there's more in the set, by the way. There's like three more of these, and there's like, I think two more of these. And all together, these are probably like 20 bucks. So maybe these four are just like eight bucks or whatever you guys want to uh, put them in perspective uh but yeah so i'm going to go ahead and go and use student brushes we are going to use just our paper towel you know we'll have these handy and we have our cup with water right here so i'll put this on the side all right um if you guys are working from home uh right now move this to a second there's a there's a shadow there um i'd probably be using a 2h pencil right there okay but because i want you guys to see my drawing i'm going to be using a 2b pencil which is this one over here all right um and what happens the the big difference between the 2h and the 2b pencil is just that one is very light which is good for home and the other one is very very dark if you guys wanted to make it dark so you guys could use that you know later or not use it at all all right so what i'm going to do right now is I'm gonna throw my big uh, sketch. So we're gonna be, if you guys look at the image already, this is a John Singer Sargent watercolor who he is known for their oil painting. He's known for his oil painting, but we are, he's actually a really good watercolorist. And we are gonna be talking about negative space. <clears throat> if you guys looked at the, old, uh, the previous video, it talks about positive space, but that's not for today. That'll be for next time, okay? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to give myself a little frame around my work. Just in case I like it, I'll probably give it to somebody or just kind of put it on the side. But in reality, I'm just doing this, uh, this frame just for you guys to see a cleaner uh, version of our drawing. Uh, I'll be doing some minor sketches on this half. So if you guys, if I need to explain something, you guys could probably see the explanations over here. Uh, but if I'm just going to be drawing, you guys could see that over here too, all right? So here we go. So if you guys look at the image, this is a, a Singer Sargent uh, uh, painting of negative space using a fountain as a reference, okay? So what we're going to do here, whenever you guys are doing watercolor, remember, watercolor has a mind of itself. So it doesn't react as you guys want it to react, okay? It has its own process, all right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna break my drawing into bigger shapes. And I'm not looking for perfect shapes, okay? I'm actually looking for really, really organic shapes. And I'm going a little darker than what I would usually go just for you guys to actually kind of see how rough my sketch is, all right? So really rough sketch, no real detail. Most of the detail that I draw will actually be implied information. So I'm having a very gestural stroke. Last time was positive space. And then the next session that we're gonna have, we're actually just gonna work from a real uh, image. And now that I actually don't need to be in the studio, uh, we're planning to build up also a few sessions from life, because uh, there's nobody in the streets and I'll just go plan myself hidden in my uh, garage and be able to actually draw from uh, from life and have people not come and visit me, <laughs> all right? All right, so here we go. 
So this is just a big fountain, okay? And this is our positive space. So this is our, our main object, okay? Uh, there's nothing more important than this thing. But the thing is that this subject matter is actually light, okay? The negative space around it is actually the dark negative space, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just sketch some of my trees over here. If you guys were using other mediums like wash or um, acrylic, the first steps are similar to watercolor, just the first steps. And then you guys have to change the ability of adding white to things. But uh, uh, here we're using watercolor. I just wanna make sure I make myself kind of clear because watercolor, we always have to build up from light to dark. So if you guys are oil painters, you guys are gonna be shifting the way of thinking. You guys might even be confused, but it's okay. I mean, it's part of the, the different mediums. It's sometimes even the best things come from trying different mediums. And more importantly, the best things just come from practice, okay? So this at the end just becomes a piece of practice. All right, so here we go. Um, so this is my rough sketch, all right? Um, when I'm drawing this, you guys could do another step, which I'm not gonna necessarily require you guys to do. I mean, or you guys could later go on to the reference and do this from home. But if we actually think about the fountain, I'll be thinking about the chiaroscuro, okay? The chiaroscuro is the Italian again for the light and dark. So what I'm gonna be doing, if you guys have a hard time seeing reference, I always recommend that you guys do this at home. It's not a requirement, but if, uh, if we don't draw a lot and we need some reference, it's okay to actually try to find the big darks and big lights. So let's say I just drew my fountain again. I'm kind of just quickly sketching this out, you know, just having a little reference here. So if I drew this again and I wanted to figure out my chiaroscuro, I would actually try to just gently hatch on my right side. I'm hatching a little darker, by the way, because I know uh, you guys might not be able to see this reference from, uh, from home very well. So I'm just hatching a little darker. If you were hatching at home for your watercolor, I would not hatch nearly as dark as this, okay? I would definitely try to keep it a little lighter than this. But I'm just trying to separate my big lights and big darks. That way, if I start watercoloring, I'm not confused to where they go. But if you guys are comfortable with your drawing, this is not necessary. This is just a, a good option. But again, not a, nothing is required, but this is definitely not a requirement, all right? So I'm gonna hatch over here. And I'm gonna hatch on this side. If I still have time to, I will go ahead and I will hatch on my tree. So let's say I have my tree over here. My, my big trees happening over here and over here. I would probably still go in here and just hatch this in, just like if it was a drawing. Well, which is a drawing, <laughs> so it's not like if it was, it is a drawing. But I would do it like if I was actually building up my drawing, which I am not, okay? Because remember, this is a watercolor piece. Is anybody working watercolor from life right now? If you guys are shy. No? <laughs> all right. If you guys are shy and there's no, there's no, uh, there's no talking, you guys could all actually type too, but all right. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to build up just a drawing. So this is the approach that I'm going to take on this piece. Okay. But I don't have to draw this values on this piece. I'm okay just drawing the values on this one on my right side. All right. So this is the, the value way we're going to approach. Don't forget the three big things that we're looking for um, watercolor. The first thing is lights and brights, okay? The second thing is 
uh, light shadows. So they're gonna be on the lighter version, which is kind of this step here. And the last step is outline and dark shadows. Okay, so whenever we get to watercolor, this is the actual approach that we're gonna take. So I'm gonna to try to finish this watercolor today and uh, it should be very, very doable once we uh, understand these steps and we follow them over here, okay? So pretty much my drawing is done. I'm okay, it's a little darker than what I would expect it to be, but I'm fine because uh, it's a study, okay? It's a study from an old master and it's just for us to understand that way next week when we actually start working, we could start interpreting, okay? If you guys have a six uh, watercolor set, that works fine. If you guys have a 12 watercolor set, that works better. If you guys have a 24 watercolor set, you probably don't need all those colors, all right? So if you have a lot of colors, you probably don't need them, all right? So what I have here is my well or my palette. What I have here is my watercolor set. It's the same ones I use at my studio uh, at the hub because I don't want to use something that you guys might not have at home. And this is student grade. And I know you guys probably have student grades, okay? So I'm going to use my uh, flat brush, my big flat here. If you guys had something already at home, I would probably use my mop brush. This is what I prefer to use at home. But like I said, I'm trying to use this, the, the tools that are available to you guys. Uh, so I'm gonna be using my big, if you guys don't have a big a flat, which are really inexpensive, you guys could grab a big round, okay? This guy will work, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work with this thing over here. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna pick my palette. Before I get started, I'm gonna pick the colors that I'm gonna be using. And the main reason why I'm picking these colors are because these are the colors that I got raised with watercolor, okay? Watercolor is an interpretive medium. It's not a copying. It's, you guys don't actually have to copy what you guys are seeing. You guys have to interpret what you guys are seeing. So it's more understanding than copy, okay? That's really important. Uh, and most art forms are that way. It's an interpretation of reality. It's not a copy. With watercolor, that's specifically true, okay? because you guys could actually get used to mixing certain colors and become really good at them and never have to use any any other palettes, all right? So what I'm gonna be using here is my yellow ochre. I don't know if you guys notice how much I nag you guys to use yellow ochre. Um, I'm gonna put this over here. If you guys have, I would use transparent oxide for my next color, but this doesn't have transparent oxide. The next closest thing to transparent oxide would be burnt sienna, okay? Transparent oxide is really good, but we don't have it here. So we gotta do without it. So once I have my yellow ochre, I'm gonna grab my burnt sienna here. So I'm trying to put all my earth tones together. Burnt sienna. And I'm gonna put some of my burnt umber too. I prefer Van Dyke or raw umber, but burnt umber is okay. It's a little, to it's a little warm. You know, burnt sienna is already warm. So if you need to balance something that's you know, already warm, you want something a little cooler. But one thing we can do is we could always have a black on the side. It'll cool off a lot of your colors. And don't forget, in watercolor, black is not meant to make your color darker. Or sorry, it's not meant to make your color black, it's meant to make your color darker in terms of value, okay? So don't use black as black, just use black to make your sienna darker to make your blues darker, your umbers darker, okay? But don't use it as black, all right? Um, here we go. And then I'm gonna, on this side, I'm gonna try to get my nice warm, so I'm gonna get my lemon yellow here. All right, just put lemon on the side. All right, I'm also gonna get reds. And red doesn't really matter, because if you guys look at the sergeant's image, there's not really a lot of red. But you always, there's a lot of green. And when you guys have a lot of green, red is a good color to uh, desaturate your green. So I'm gonna get cadmium red DQ. So this one's cadmium red light, the one that looks orange. This one's cadmium red deep, the one that looks more red and darker. All right. And 
I'm not gonna get any green. I actually want to mix my own green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get two blues. I'm gonna get my uh, halo blue over here. If you guys don't have any more blues, that's all you need, okay? If you guys have more blues, then you guys could grab your French Ultraman. But that's a that's a luxury. <laughs> it's a good it's a good option, but it's not a requirement. Um, so I'll put this on the side. So one of us more green, one of us more purple. They're both cold at the end, but that's different types of blues. So if you guys look at my palette, that's it. And I'm not gonna try to use anything different. I'm just gonna try to work with what I already have, all right? There we go. So the first thing is, let's throw in our bright color. So I'm gonna go back to my, to my big flat brush over here. And I'm gonna be indiscriminate with my yellows, okay? The yellow is my weakest color. And yellow ochre might feel a little dark for some people, but in reality, it's really light. It, uh, if you guys use it with a lot of water. So what I'm gonna do right now is, I'm just gonna go ahead, just loosen up my palette. Just gonna meander with my colors here. Just move them around. Grab a little lemon with it. Go a little brighter. And I watercolor a lot, so one of the main reasons why I lose is because I watercolor a lot and if you guys did the drawing session earlier, you guys also know that I draw quite a bit. And if I'm not drawing by myself, I'm at least drawing when I'm showing or when I'm explaining artwork. So I'm just trying to bring out some of the lights because I went really loose with my um, yellow ochre, but I'm okay with it, like I said, because I know while it's still wet, I could still dab some of my light colors out. All right, there we go. Just having fun. So now that I have a lot of my warmer colors, or my yellow warm, I'm also going to start adding a few of my transitions, which include a little bit of this umber. It's just going to be a little cooler. Like I said, I would prefer a Van Dyke or a raw umber. So I'm just going to come in here and just be very loose with this cooler color. And you guys could mute me if you guys just want to see and you guys could listen to your to your own music <laughs> or just kind of my music is very light so you guys might actually not hear much but I'm just doing some warms here all right and I'm also going to start pulling in some cools okay the cools are really important because um, whenever we balance a picture we're always trying to talk about balancing between warms and colds okay now is where we actually want to balance the cool in the picture. All right, so I'm, gra I'm, gra I'm grabbing some of that um, phthalo blue, just mixing it with a little bit of French ultramarine blue and just throwing a cooler color, okay? This is all going in while the first layer is still wet. Right. So this is all still wet, this is all still wet. So it's really bleeding into the next color. That way, whenever I'm finished, the colors don't look like they don't belong together. Okay, so they actually feel like they're part of each other. I don't like my top shape because it's really off balance, but I'll go ahead and I'll extend it now. All right. I'm gonna go a little cooler on the top and I'm gonna to try to center my picture again because my picture, like I said, it's really off center and it's not bothering me. All right. Let's grab some more French Ultramarine or you could add red. If you don't have both blues, uh, you could actually add red to your phthalo or if you don't have the phthalo blue, you could actually add a uh, uh, yellow to your French ultramarine. So if you, get, you guys don't have all the colors, it's okay. It's not the, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of all problems. All right. I'm gonna pull this yellow in here. So once I have my colors ready to go, 
I'm gonna add somewhere I'm missing. I'm gonna start also blocking just a big color on the background, okay? And the big colors on the background, don't look for those greens, don't look for the really dark greens, just try to look for the brightest color, okay? And the brightest color that I actually see are cooler greens and yellows. That's pretty much it, okay? So down here, I'm gonna just go for cooler greens. We're just gonna bring in some cold. All right, just bring in some cooler greens. And then some yellow ochres again, just to warm up the picture, because it's not gonna be way too cold. We gotta paint the bottom area here, but just make sure if you guys are working, don't forget to paint that bottom area. Just completely spaced out. Alright, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the bottom area. Just add a few more blues to it. Just suggestions. These are suggestions, okay? They're not they're not you know perfect coloring. It's mostly suggestions between lights and darks. That's what I'm really focusing on right now. Um, like I said, there'll be time for us to layer our values more. And when we do that, you know, you guys could suggest even darker and even more volume. Right now, it's not any of that sort of stuff, okay? It's just bigger stuff. So, once I have this, I'll add some brighter greens into my, my trees, or into my bush trees in the back. And just go ahead and have a mapping of color. It's really cool this color is. And in the image, the color is really warm and it's really muddy. It's actually really close to black. But this is the only time where, where I'm able to put this really nice color. If I don't use this color now, it'll never be available for me anymore. So I want to use it before I start doing my darker values. All right, so I'm just blocking in. You guys are gonna end up with a really nice, just bright color, almost like a, you know, if I was a, a child, I'd probably be kind of this bright, all right? Here we go. All right. So that looks pretty good. You know, I have my big brights, I have my big foundation. Uh, I have no detail, but I'm beginning to understand what direction my picture is gonna get. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty good. If you guys had time here, you guys would wanna blow dry this. If you guys had time, just go, you know, do something else, go uh, uh, to another streaming video or whatever. But this time is pretty much just kinda relax and hang out. I'm not going to relax, I'm not going to hang out, so I'm going to go straight into my phthalo again. And this is a painting of negative space. So what makes a negative space pick, uh, painting important is with watercolor, you guys should always understand what to work first and what to work last. You work first the lights and the brights, which we kind of did, we just did not work detail. Now we're going to try to work a little darker values. I'm just going to work some little darker values to make my lights come out, okay? So look at my drawing, my drawing is horrible. It's actually very lopsided. So at this point, I'm, I'll be able to actually fix my drawing by adding a little bit of a darker value and moving this darker value around. So all those yellows that we had before are gonna now disappear or they're gonna become really unimportant, the ones that went outside of my picture, because I'm blocking off with my negative space. So now I'm able to move this around. So now this thing used to be all lopsided. There used to be no detail over here. Now there's detail over here. And I'm even gonna go on top of my other trees because what this, what this makes, it actually makes your other trees darker, okay? So I don't even have to worry about that because I know that this has to be darker itself. And right now, I just have to move a lighter background. All right, just painting with negative space. 
I'm gonna go over here. The left side is the one that needs fixing, which is what I'm gonna do now, all right? So if I didn't like my drawing because it was too lopsided or too funny looking, because I just kind of drew it on the fly, I'm just gonna go ahead and let's cover this guy's head. Now I'm gonna push my top of my fountain where my top of my fountain needs to be. So you guys are understanding the sense that if you guys were working from life, how fast this process actually is. You guys don't even have to be careful. You guys just have to, you know, work fast, have fun, quick sketch. And if you guys need to go outside uh, and do this from life, you know, that would work perfectly fine. All right. So this looks really good. This is, this is pretty much my uh, first and second layer. I already did uh, lights and brights, which were my yellows and my blues. That's already happening. My shadows, I kind of did with some of my blues. So this could be it for my shadows as well, okay? But now, what we're gonna start doing, I'm gonna start working on the dried areas, and I'm gonna start building up a form here, okay? To build up this form, I'm gonna go to my round brush. So I'm gonna go back to this one over here, all right? So little by little, I'm gonna push the same blues as in my sky. Don't forget, white things, this is a fountain, and the fountain is white. White things are painted with atmospheric color. So white things are not white. They are the color of the atmosphere. So if the sky is blue, the shadow things of white things are blue. If the sun is yellow, the highlight things of the sun is yellow, so that's yellow. Um, so you just have to paint with exactly the same color. You guys don't have to get a whole new range of color. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and start with my burnt sienna yellow ochre and I'm just gonna start doing some outlines or some information. Okay, that's all I'm doing. And this is not my dark color by the way, but I'll be, uh, I'll be conservative right now. I'll be doing my drawing. I just added a little umber and blue to this just to make my color cooler. All right, I'm gonna pull this guy around. Just move my sienna colors, sorry, my sienna and ochre colors around. And I'm gonna be a lot quicker, by the way. I don't, I'm not gonna, I didn't draw the picture good enough to start spending so much time on these little details. But you guys will see that my suggestive work will still work the same way. All right. So this is better. I'm just doing some of the darks over here. Some of the yellows. I'm almost making like a copper color. All right. So when I work really quickly with these, all right, let's say I'm done. All right, so now I'm gonna go into my blues, okay? And I'm mixing my phthalo with a little bit of, uh, of uh, black. You could also, by the way, if you don't have Thalo, Cobalt works very similar to Thalo. Cyan works very similar to Thalo. And um, um, uh, Prussian works very similar to Thalo. I think most of you guys will have Thalo or Cobalt, so you should be fine with that, okay? So now, using my blue value, I'm gonna start incorporating this nice blue into my shadow part of my picture. And I'm not done with this. I'm still going to come back and outline this drawing. The only thing I'm doing now is I'm better separating my lights and my darks. 
camera. This is my gestural drawing. This is where if I don't like something, it's still okay. And we'll later change this, okay? All right, going a little darker up here. So this is the blue of the sky. If I wanted to go a little bit more blue, just draw more blue on there, okay? If you want to go more gray, just leave the gray on there. This is completely your choice and your call. Here I'm going to drop a little bit more blue. Here I'm going to drop a little bit of blue. And here I'm not going to drop a lot of blue. I'm pretty much just working as I see. Sometimes if the color is too dark, just dry your brush. That's what I was doing. Just clean your brush and then just pick up some of the color and you'll get back to lighter values. Clean your brush and pick up some of the color. If you guys uh, actually pay attention, I'm not using, this is like my biggest pet peeve in watercolor, <clears throat> that we overuse our paper towel to fix mistakes. That's not what the paper towel is there to do. That's, it's there to dry your brush, but it's not there to over fix mistakes, okay? So try not to use your paper towel just to <clears throat> do something and rub your picture. If you guys have a good watercolor paper, by all means, go ahead and do that. If you guys have a student grade watercolor paper like what I'm using, it's actually gonna rip your paper. Just a little heads up, okay? Um, so be really considerate of how you're using your, uh, your watercolor paper itself and your paper towel, all right? I'm just doing a few lines here. It's still very organic. This is not my final piece. <clears throat> so this is not where I'm actually gonna try to keep my piece the more defined and the nicest. This is still me having a lot of fun, okay? Really lose right with your painting, okay? If it seems like you're actually not painting, but you're actually uh, just signing your picture, Go ahead and make it feel that way, right? It's a watercolor. It's uh, an interpretation. I cannot nag how important that is. Don't try to copy. Copy's not good. You want to copy, you draw. You want to copy, you oil paint. You want to watercolor, you interpret. All right, so here we go. All right, just going to have fun here. Build up some of your values. These are like uh, cupids or little naked kids. But here I'm just gonna interpret little people. Okay. All right, so here we go. So I began to build up my drawing a bit, all right? Not too much, but enough. At this point, I'm gonna start darkening up the background to make my picture get exposed, all right? So I'm going to go back to the French ultramarine blue or adding red to your cobalt or cyan. I'm going to build up just enough yellow. It doesn't matter what yellow you guys are using because the yellow is really muddy. So I'm using my yellow ochre. Oh, it might be too muddy. So yeah, I'm going to go to my lemon. It's a little too muddy. All right. So I'm just going to make this kind of dirty green here. But if I need to make it a little dirtier, I'm going to start adding a little bit of reds, all right? And I'll always keep my yellow ochre handy. That's really a nice color for an earthy green. So here we go. I have two big colors here. I'm going to grab my yellow ochre and just start blocking in some of my light. Okay, don't forget, this is my lighter color. I'm having fun with this, shaping, I'm drawing with this. All right. I'm gonna make it a little warmer here and there. Warmer just means that your, your trees are entering a different season or they're dying, you know. Something is happening to them, but they're actually going a little warmer. Uh, over here, I'm going to start entering into my darker values. It's still a green, it's just a very deep green. All right. 
Remember what I tell you guys at the studio, whoever's working on watercolors, watercolor is a medium that you want to be engaged. So if you're not engaged with a medium, sometimes you're not doing a great job, not because you guys are not doing a great job, because you guys are walking around, you know, or I'm walking around and so forth. But whenever I'm engaged with my watercolors, I'm actually very fluid with them. I, I'm kind of cruise controlling with them. I'm beginning to have a good time. And one other thing this dark green is doing, it's again, exposing my positive space even better. It's exposing my fountain more. All right. Just continue to block, have a green variation. Don't strive for a perfect color. There's no such thing as a perfect color, and there's no such thing as a perfect color in watercolor, okay? Watercolor, it's all interpret information. All right. And if I need to do some of my greens down here, I'm gonna go more with a blue color. And I got it easy because Sargent already interpreted a lot of the work for me. So I don't even have to worry about interpretation. I'm just understanding his interpretation. Later on, when we work on next week's watercolor, that's gonna be completely independent. Make sure that we understand that I'm not gonna to try to copy, I'm gonna interpret. Does anybody have any questions so far? No? All right, I'm just trying to make it as, I actually, you guys cannot see, but I actually have some notes over there just for me to not forget what I'm saying. <laughs> so, uh, so even though I kind of do this all the time, I, uh, I still want to remember what things I'm saying and uh, try, to, try to incorporate them on there. So pretty much the watercolor is done on the most important parts okay if you guys didn't get the first layer right and you guys started really illustrating or really focusing on details your picture begins to look um uh like a cut out watercolor like you actually cut this out paste it cut this out paste it cut this out paste it if your first layer was bleeding if your first layer colors blend into other colors, you guys are gonna have the greatest watercolor, you guys are gonna have a good time. Uh, unfortunately, as people, as humans, we always wanna focus on detail. So we always wanna focus on the step that I'm about to do, but we never wanna focus on the looser step. And in order to make a good artwork, if you guys look at the drawing recording that I did, or if you guys look at the oil painting recording that I did, a good artwork is not about painting details in sections because that looks really, really surreal. It's about trying to make the picture feel together as a whole, right? So we want to make it feel like it's one big piece, not 10 little paintings, all right? So really quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing some outline, okay? That's, that's the last step. So right now we did a little bit more shadows. We already finished the lights and the brights, that's step one. Now we're going to be doing some outlines, all right? And for outlines, what we're really doing is implied information. So I'm going to go back to my earth tones, my burnt uh, umber, my blacks, um, a little bit of my yellow ochres over here. All right, here we go. So now, uh, it doesn't matter where we start, this is how much detail you guys actually want to do. If you guys want to do a really detailed drawing, you spend a good amount of time here. I'm just gonna be doing just a drawing for what I for what I did, you know, very simple, very gestural. So I'm just gonna do a line there. I'm gonna do a line over here. So the fun thing here is I actually don't even have to connect these two together. Your brain will connect them together. Okay? You don't have to do anything. Let the 
let the sitter or whoever's looking at this picture do some of the work for you. You don't you don't always want to do all the work for, for people. All right. You guys have to let them you guys have to let them interpret. All right, so I'm just gonna do a few outlines here. Little hair on my person there. Line here. Little underlines over here. Little underlines over here. Little cooler line here. Followed by an underline there. I'm just doing a lot of outlines just to define my picture a lot more. And I'm just going to go, you know, from top to bottom or bottom to top. It doesn't really matter as long as you guys are understanding the process and the shadows as they get higher, you lose some of the darks because there's more light hitting the top part. But here I'm just going to do just a little bit of lines. Any few lines that you guys apply will structure the drawing so much. You guys don't even have to do a lot of these lines. It's just a few, just those one or two lines that you guys do for section will structure the whole picture together. And we're not actually done. We're gonna leave the most important outline to the end, which is gonna be the uh, background outline. Okay. My drawing is kind of not that good. I just, I think it's because I just did a big session of drawing and I got tired of looking for proportion. My drawing is actually kind of abstract, but it's okay because I'm not looking for a good drawing. I'm looking for an interpretive drawing, an interpretive painting. All right. Just real quickly, I'm going to start to get this thing filling in shape. All right. And finally, I'm going to do this one here. little guy here. I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much just wrap my my piece, okay? And I'm gonna wrap my piece up with that uh, phthalo, my black, and I'm just gonna clean my outline. Okay, so if I have a more organized watercolor now, at this point, I could still start with an outline and just work this color out. So again, remember we're painting with negative space. So even though we did a good drawing, the drawing is not perfect. And this negative space helps us lock in our drawing. Yeah, I'm going to keep it kind of abstract. I don't need to do a whole bunch of definition. And just push my color around. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. Oops, here. So I'm just going to go ahead and shape this little guy up. Shape the front of my um, sculpture here, or my um, fountain. And once you shape a few things, you don't have to be, you know, you don't want to have a stark line like this. So just go clean your brush and just with water, move your color around. While it's still wet, watercolor will do whatever it wants it to do. When it's dry, good luck. It depends on the paper that you have.
If you guys don't have a good paper, you can't do anything to it. Or if you guys are using a satin paper, you guys cannot do anything. If you guys are using a warm paper, you guys cannot do anything. But if you if you guys are using uh, uh, cold press, cold press does allow you to pick up. I'm using a student grade, so it's a cold press student grade. It doesn't allow me to pick up very well. But, you know, we understand where our limits kind of fall and where our fine boundaries kind of fall. Okay, and let's get back to the three Bs here. And pretty much I'm all done with the watercolor. So um, hopefully it still looks, you know, pretty good. It looks pretty decent, kind of following the guidelines of the, of the reference. And next week, this is not going to be the guidelines of the reference. Next week, this is actually going to be uh, our own interpretation on our watercolor piece okay uh, if you guys have any questions now is a good time if you guys are good and you guys just want to later see the video don't forget it's going to be on that uh google classroom uh reference and you guys could take a look you know discuss if you guys have questions after and you guys want to let me know just go ahead and let me know i uh, i check periodically and if you guys are also doing work from home don't forget that um, you guys could try to schedule an online meeting with me. I know I have some of my AP students that are uh, getting ready for their AP submissions. So I'm, you know, I'm still very active on trying to keep uh, uh, online critiques and all that stuff because apparently we got extended our AP exam for one month, but I don't even know if that's gonna be enough for some of the students to be pretty active so um, if you guys uh, have any questions anything no yes maybe so <laughs> <laughs> all right well all right you guys so this is going to be the end of the video uh, if you guys want to practice at home you guys let the video load up like in an hour or so and then you guys could just you know repeat and check the reference out and clean up your drawing clean up your watercolor uh, I did this in like uh, 45 minutes. So if you guys need to spend a little longer with the drawing, by all means, spend a little longer. If you guys want to keep it gestural as I did, keep it gestural as I did. They'll all work pretty good.